Hello everyone, this is Senior Biotech Analyst John Vandermosten. Welcome to our channel that educates the life sciences investor on exciting advancements in drugs, biologics, and devices. For more content and news like this, subscribe to our channel below and like or share with others. Welcome everyone to our discussion with the Chief Medical Officer of Tiziana Life Sciences, Dr. Matthew Davis. Welcome to Unboxing Biotech. Thanks, John, for having me. It is our pleasure. Tiziana has been generating exciting data in multiple sclerosis patients. MS is an autoimmune disease where T cells attack the myelin sheath that protects the nervous system. Patients usually deteriorate over time, and that is why Forolumab's results are so remarkable, where multiple patients have shown improvements in their physical skills. Dr. Davis, can you share what you've seen? It's very exciting. We have an open label expanded access program. In our first cohort of two patients, one of our patients went from not being able to walk without assistance to being able to walk over 200 meters without assistance and went back to work. This is very intriguing because there are no FDA approved treatments for non-active secondary multiple sclerosis. You know, I think a lot of people have heard about multiple sclerosis, but not necessarily secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Can you explain the difference between the two? If you're unfortunate enough to progress with multiple sclerosis, there's a point in time in which you go into the secondary progressive, and it comes in two flavors, one active, one not active. For active, you're having attacks. They're measurable. You know when you're having the attack. If I get an MRI of your brain, I can see the lesion that caused that attack. And there are multiple treatments for this. There's some excellent treatments that are out there right now. Now, if you've gone two years without an attack, I don't see anything in your MRI. You, you don't say on this day, I just got much worse, but you continue to progress. That's non-active secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. There is no FDA approved treatment and that's what we're studying. So you are running right now an expanded access trial how did this initially come about and what are your expectations for this to show? Because there is no treatment for this disease in multiple sclerosis and because it has such morbidity and mortality, there is a program with the FDA that allows under strict supervision the access of promising drugs. This data leads us to go to our phase 2A trial, which will be a controlled trial looking at placebo, two doses, and everyone's going to be blinded during this trial. And that should give us a definitive answer of whether or not we will alter the inflammatory state that's in the brain that's seen in patients with non-active secondary progressive. Now, forolumab is a monoclonal antibody. Uh, generally, monoclonal antibodies are infused in the system. However, uh, Tiziana is using an intranasal formulation of uh, of forolumab. Tell us why you're using this formulation and, and how it differs from uh, using an, infer, an infused version of, the, of, a, of that type of drug. It's an interesting question and how you give this product is going to depend on how it reacts to the body. So if you give this type of monoclonal antibody, and this is called an anti-CD3, we happen to have the only full human version of that product, but if you give it in an infusion, the antibody itself is going throughout the body and it's causing a direct effect. If you give it orally, it's going to the lymph nodes in your intestines and that gives another type an effect. It happens to be a local effect where T cells are going to migrate throughout the body and cause an effect. But if you give it intranasally, it goes locally to your cervical lymph node, it's going to create a very specific type of Treg, and the Treg's job is to circulate through the body, including the brain, and to take the immune system, which is in an activated state, and put it to a non-activated state. So in our clinical research, we found that this was the most appealing way to get to the type of T cell that we wanted to get to, this regulatory T cell. And then when we used, looked at human experience, we were very pleasantly surprised in what we saw in our patients with multiple sclerosis. What are some of the metrics that you're going to use to measure success in the ongoing trial and then the future uh, phase two, two trial? So success for the phase 2A is going to be very simple. In a three-month period, do we take patients looking at a PET scan, so we're looking at whether or not 
their uh, immune system is activated. Can we take it to a non-activated state? And is that different from a placebo? Of course, we're going to study every other outcome measure that you can imagine that's been studied with multiple sclerosis, including clinical endpoints and also biomarkers. If that study is positive, it's a short study, then we moved into a phase 2B, and that's going to be a much more traditional trial that other people have done. We're not going to reinvent anything, and that's going to have an FDA-validated endpoint to guide us uh, on our next steps, depending on how that data looks. We'll have a lot of optionality. Um, everyone's heard of multiple sclerosis, and it affects about a million people in the United States and about 3 million people around the world. What's the opportunity for intranasal furlumab, uh, assuming that the trials are successful? There is no FDA-approved treatment for non-active secondary progressive. This is a small disease set. This is under 200,000 patients. And right now, there's nothing that's approved. We can benefit these patients if we're found to be safe and effective. And I guess, I guess as you said, it's a subset of that 1 million and 3 million around the world. So I think, it, uh, is there, are there any numbers you can attach to that, uh, that amount? Our research says it's under 200,000. And as we continue to work with the FDA in the definition of this subset, and please remember, since this product, sorry, this indication has never been approved, there's a discussion ongoing with the FDA. What is the definition of non-active secondary progressive from a, a regulatory standpoint? Once that is quantified and they accept our protocol, we would have a number for how many people are, uh, have that in the United States. Well, one of the markers for MS is microglial activation, and that's one thing that, that, that Tiziana has discussed uh, regularly in its, in its press releases. Why is this relevant, and why are you measuring this in trial subjects? So at the end of the day, what's happening is your brain is, and your CNS, the, um, basically the immunity system, is attacking itself. We're trying to reset that immunity to have it stopping attacking itself. At the end of the day, the most important metric is how is the patient doing? But we believe to get there, we need to take that activated state of the immunity and rebalance it back to a more passive state. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Davis. We've had the Chief Medical Officer of Tiziana Life Sciences with us in the studio. Uh, Tiziana Life Sciences, ticker symbol TLSA.